It's estimated that among Australians who live in major cities who profess to be committed Bible-believing Christians, most will only attend church one Sunday every month. And even then, it's not always the same church each time. But why do Christians need the church? What's wrong with doing Christianity on your own, at your own pace? Stay tuned to find out. Every Christian is called to be passionately committed to a local church. Why? Because the local church is the key to spiritual health and growth for the Christian. The church community is where we learn to love God, love others, where we sit under the teaching of the word being preached, where we pray for each other, worship together. Now you may be thinking, church is good and all, but what's wrong with doing things at home? I can listen to hymns on my iPod, I can watch sermons on YouTube, I've got tons of Christian books, I can do it all on my own. If that's what you believe, let me challenge you. Take your Bible. Got it? Good. Turn to the Gospel of Matthew, start the New Testament. Now take a blue pen and a red pen. You ready? Here's what I want you to do. With the blue pen, underline all the instructions and commands given exclusively to individuals. That is, just you. Now with the red pen, underline all the passages that either A, involve another Christian, or B, are addressed to a group of believers. All set? Okay, now hit the pause button as you do this exercise. I'll see you in a minute. Welcome back. So how'd you go? I assume that what you found was that the majority of New Testament commands are actually corporate, while those that are personal are fewer in number. For example, Matthew 18, 15. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. In 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul repeatedly begins his instructions with the phrase, when you come together. When you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you. So then, my brothers, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. When you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation that all things be done for building up. And of course, Hebrews 10, 23-25. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir one another up to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So as we can see, the Bible does not explicitly command Christians to join a church. It assumes it as the norm. So too, the Bible uses very graphic illustrations to describe believers collectively. The first is that of a temple under construction in 1 Peter chapter 2. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. For it stands in scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not to be put to shame. Likewise, Ephesians 2. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you are also being built together into a dwelling place by God for the Spirit. It's a very simple illustration. Jesus is the foundation while we are bricks and water that fit together as one. Speaking of this illustration, Charles Spurgeon had this to say of professing Christians who refuse to get involved in the local church. What is a brick made for? To help build a house. 
it is of no use that the brick to tell you that it is just a good brick while it is kicking on the ground as it would be in the house. It is a good for nothing rock. So you rolling stone Christians, I do not believe you are answering your purpose. You are living contrary to the life which Christ would have you live, and you are much to blame for the injury you do. End quote. I've been a Christian for nearly 15 years, but I can challenge you to find me a professing believer who has been intentionally avoiding the local church for two years or more, who doesn't have a pattern of unrepentant sin, who hasn't adopted some form of unbiblical heresy, who actually displays the fruits of love, joy, peace, patience, self-control, and has a genuine sense of camaraderie when they're around other believers. One thing the local church will do best is to show your non-Christian friends that the new life made possible through the death and resurrection of Christ is also the foundation for a new community. By living as a new community distinct from the parent society, the local church will demonstrate by example the transforming effect of the gospel for the world to see. But others won't be able to see this if you are restricted by do-it-yourself religion. In that regard, church is far more better than a university Christian club or a community Bible study or watching sermons on YouTube in your grandmother's basement. None of them can substitute a church that displays the distinct qualities of a God-centered community. So if you know someone who says that they are a Christ-following, Bible-believing, born-again Christian, but yet they refuse to get involved in a local church, feel free to send them this vid with the subject line, This is for you. On the other hand, if you actually are that person, and you are starting to see that how you've been practicing your Christian walk is contrary to what the Bible says, what you should be doing, let me challenge you to do this. It's 2017. Let this be the year when God calls you home. Thanks for watching.